Hey guys, Josh Pabst here from Pabst Photo with another Photoshop tutorial for you. Today we are going to look at the displacement tool in Photoshop and we are going to see how we get this effect of mapping on a pattern onto some other surface. In this case we've mapped some flowers onto Taylor Swift's face. So let's, let's find out how we do that. So without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, so we found an image. I found an image of Taylor Swift. I will say light colors work better for whatever you are mapping onto. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and cut her out, get rid of that background. Um, I am using the polygon lasso, and I'm using a feather of one pixel. There are lots of ways to cut out an object in Photoshop. Um, but if the background is complicated and you haven't used a green screen, chroma key, blue screen, or anything like that, then sometimes you just have to do the long, arduous work of cutting it out. And I'll skip ahead now uh, so that we're, you don't have to watch me trace all these objects. Okay, now we've got Taylor all cut out, and I duplicated that layer. So as you can see, you can now change the background color to whatever you like and I didn't do a great job it, it's not really gonna matter because I'm going to leave the background to be generally white so it doesn't have to be perfect uh, and it's not really what we're talking about in this tutorial we're not talking about cutouts and layer masks and that kind of thing so it's quick it's dirty and it's gonna work for what we're gonna do so now what I need to do to this image First, I'm going to desaturate it. Control U takes you into saturation, and then Control L brings me into levels. Now, I w I'm just looking at the face, and I really want no grays. I want everything to be black and white. That's going to tell the pixels how to get displaced later. So once I've made this black and white version, and I've really looked at the face, this is what my histogram looks like. So now if I go over to Channels, and I Control click on RGB I get a selection now I have an alpha selection that I can copy and paste into a new file this is essentially the luminance of this image now I'm sorry if I'm going a little fast but we take this luminance image we put it into its own file and before I save it I'm gonna go to filter and blur this using a Gaussian blur and about five pixels is enough and now I'm gonna make sure that I save this file as a PSD I'm going to name it something that has map in the title because that's essentially how we're gonna use it we're gonna use it as a displacement map so now I'm back to my original file and I'm gonna go and find some graphic image that I want to map. I found this image of roses it reminded me of the new album Red. It'll work just fine. So now I'm going to paste my image of roses into a new layer and I just want to make sure that I'm covering the skin tones. I'm not worried about covering her hair or her clothes because I'm going to get rid of that. And as you can see I, I've got all the skin covered so the next thing I need to do is I'm going to duplicate that layer and then I'm going to go up to filter, distort and this is what this tutorial is about, I click displace now I'm going to leave it on 10 pixels each I'm going to select that map, that file that we saved, that PSD file that I named map now already those pixels have been displaced now it's very subtle and it's hard to notice until you toggle back and forth from the original rows now I'm going to put that layer on something like overlay or soft light and so what it does is using that map using that information it's now torqued and twisted and pushed and pulled on those pixels based on the lights and darks of that map PSD we created and you can see how some of the, uh, the pixels have moved when I toggle back and forth between the original rose image and this one now to get the effect a little better we need to clean this up I like I said I don't want it in the hair I don't want it on her clothes 
So I just made it a silhouette so I could quickly grab the background. I want to get rid of the roses in the background. Um, I could take a lot of time and refine this edge, but I really don't think that's necessary. I'm just showing you some of these tools. We're not really going to mess with that. Um, you do want to make sure that when you select the background that you are not stuck on contiguous the way I was. And now we're, we're, we're better and we've got that gap in between the hair. But again, you can see the selection's pretty sloppy. I'm really not too worried about it. That's not what we're that's not what we're fiddling with right now, and we can clean it up later. So, once we grab that selection, and one way to do it is to go to channels RGB and control click and it'll grab that selection. And once you have that selection, you can basically just delete the roses in the background. So once we have those background roses deleted, we need to clean up the rest of the image. We still see flowers in her hair, on her clothes. So what I'm going to do is make a layer mask by clicking this button down here. And we get this white layer mask, which means it's not doing anything. If I control I, it changes to black. And then everything goes away. And I'm going to leave it on white. Now I'm going to get my paintbrush and paint black. Now the black is not going to let it through, so basically it's like erasing. I'm not actually erasing it, so I can always change this. That's what's nice about using these layer masks. But I'm just going to paint out what I don't want. And I don't want it on these clothes, I don't want it in her hair, so I'm just going to go through and paint all this stuff out. If you're not familiar with layer masks, check out some other tutorials. Get used to them. The sooner you start using the sooner you start using them, the better off you're going to be. You know, if you go down a road for three or four years like I did without using layer masks, you're going to wish that you'd been using them all along. They really will save your, save your rear end at some point because there's only so many undos that you have available in Photoshop. So, anyway, I'm just painting in the black. And you can see over on my layer that as I paint this black in, it, it becomes visible in my layer mask. I'm also going to erase everything from the eyes and the mouth because it doesn't make sense there. And this took a little while, so I'm just kind of zipping through it, time-lapse style, so you don't have to watch me paint out all these little spots but I think hopefully you get the idea and you can include it or not include it on lips, teeth, hair, whatever it is that you decide. I'm also going to decrease the brightness of these roses here. Uh, I think it makes it look a little more matte, it matches the skin tone a little bit. So I noticed that I didn't love the scale of this image so in order to make it look better I grab the same file, but I'm going to duplicate it three times so that it covers the skin, but it's a much finer grain texture. And so a lot of editing, a lot of Photoshop, is really just about deciding what looks good. You know, you're going to try, you're going to have trial and error, and you're going to fail sometimes, but, you know, just keep working that image until you get the look that you're going for. So I'm just repeating these steps, but now I'm using a finer grain and I think it really helps the image I'm gonna borrow that layer mask that I've already made and apply it to this new finer grain rose detail and I think that is starting to look a lot more like what I had in mind like there are more of them the density more of the skin is covered and I like the way it looks so yeah I have to go back in and fix my mask because I, this having three of those was a little bit bigger and but it's not a big deal, so it didn't take me that long. And if I hadn't used a mask that first time, then it would have burned me just now. So this is a perfect example of when a layer mask can really save you a lot of time when something doesn't go quite right. But now we are getting to an image that I'm pretty happy with. Generally, I think maybe her lips are a little too red, so I can make duplicate that soft light layer so that my roses start to elevate in how red they are but I'm pretty satisfied with that. I'm gonna stop there go ahead and turn that background back on if I wanted to. That's why I wasn't too worried about that layer mask 
and now we have a pretty interesting looking image. No, it may not be the absolute best version of the displacement tool that I've ever done, but hopefully you get the idea. You can think of other interesting ways to use it. Uh, if you do find other interesting ways to use it, please share in the comments below, whether on YouTube or Vimeo. Also, if you are on one of those two sites, look down below for links back to our website. There's always more tips and tricks and a little bit more detail uh, in the text-based content on our website. So check that out. Thanks for visiting. We are Paps Photo. I'm Josh Paps. Till next time. Thank you.